Hey, uh, I was wondering if you are experiencing digestive disorders like bloating or gas or diarrhea. Uh, I've been working with one of my coaching clients today and uh, setting up, you know, helping her with her meal plans and her nutrition and that's an issue for her so I've been doing a lot of research and and helping her and I thought you know what it would I bet a lot of people uh, would like to hear about the information that I'm sharing with this one client so I thought I would share it with you as well so um, today what I want to talk about is FODMAP foods and if you don't know what FODMAP foods are it's totally fine. It's an acronym, and I'm not really good at saying some of the words that the acronym stands for, but F stands for fermentable. So it means that uh, the foods are broken down in the large bowel, uh, and they're fermented in the large bowel. The O is like oligosaccharides. And that really just means that there's few saccharides, so there's single sugars and disaccharides, which are two sugar molecules put together, and monosaccharides, which are really single um, sugar molecules. Are you noticing a, a theme here with sugar? And uh, then there's poly, I think it's called polyols, and that's just sugar alcohols. So FODMAP foods tend to have um, their, their carb a lot of carbohydrate based foods, uh, but they're often like single and double sugar. So they're simple carbohydrates. And basically what happens when you eat a FODMAP food, if, if this is a problem for you, is that you eat the food and then um, in the small bowel what will happen is that some FODMAPs will pull the water in your stomach into your bowel and you might have uh, into your small bowel and you might experience diarrhea. Uh, this, the second thing that might happen if though if you have IBS or some other issues is that FODMAP foods travel into the large intestine or the gut and they stay pretty much undigested from there and then there's bacteria in the gut and the bacteria uses the FODMAPs for energy and when that energy is um, or when they kind of eat up the FODMAPs, gas is released. And so what happens is you feel gas and bloating and a lot of pain. So if you notice that you get gassy and bloaty, then what you might want to consider is reducing some of the foods that are uh, have contain high like high FODMAP foods. And high fat high FODMAP foods aren't necessarily unhealthy foods. There's a there's a large variety, like lots of foods that are seemingly healthy. And so um, in the write-up, I'm going to put the um, lots of the foods that you might want to consider uh, reducing or eliminating because different people, some people might be able to eat asparagus and some people might not. Some people might be able to eat garlic and onion and some people might not. So you really have to do a, a kind of an elimination diet. And so this client that I have, she's just experiencing debilitating um, pain. And so it's great that, you know, we've, we've kind of, we're, we're planning her nutrition so that we're reducing all these FODMAP foods and I'm creating a plan so that, you know, she's feeling really hopeful that she's going to be able to, um, you know, live kind of normally, have more of a normal life. So um, if you are experiencing gas and bloating, that, you know, the list is going to help you. Some of these things. So uh, like I said, lots of them are healthy, like asparagus and artichoke, cauliflower. Like these are healthy things. Um, but onions and peas and garlic, those are some of the vegetables. And surprisingly, some of the fruits like apples and um, nectarines, uh, um, peaches, watermelon, um, and I, I was trying to think, well, maybe they're just the more of the high glycemic foods. But, you know, a peach is a pretty low glycemic food. Now, a, ra a raisin and a watermelon is a higher glycemic food. But even so, like, they're just higher FODMAP foods. Avocado, which I still laugh at as a fruit. It doesn't seem like a fruit, but it is. It sometimes can be tolerated in small quantities. Um, when you look at grains, typically if you just try and go gluten-free, that's going to help you. Uh, lots of times there's added sugar. So, you know, reducing your wheat intake, um, you know, flour intake in, in particular is going to help. Um, you know, semolina and wheat noodles, couscous, 
um, like just pasta in general, probably not a good idea. Rice is, is pretty good. So you should be able to do, do rice. And oftentimes dairy is an issue. So if you, if you kind of think about cutting out dairy and cutting out gluten, that's a good start. Cutting out simple sugars, that's a good start because those FODMAP foods get into your large intestine and the bacteria there just eats it up, gives you um, you know, the and as it eats it up, it releases gas and bloating, and so you're just feeding the bacteria within your stomach. So reducing those foods is a great start for you. Um, so those are, like I have the list there, and um, members of Shauna 24-7, I'm going to have a more complete list. I'm going to have the low FODMAP foods. I'll have a document for you that we'll put in the files. Uh, the low FODMAP foods and the high FODMAP foods. So those high FODMAP foods are the ones that you probably want to eliminate. So you might want to print those off and just try and eliminate those foods. And then if it reduces your your gas and bloating, then slowly you might want to introduce, uh, you know, maybe you're going to try onions. And then it's like, oh, if your stomach flares up, onions is you know off the list and I know that it is restrictive but so is gas and bloating and it's not very you know it's really uncomfortable and um, you know you're not going to want to have gas and bloating so you might want to risk not having onions or you know give up give, give up having onions or some of the FODMAP foods that that are triggers for you good news is that most fats and oils uh, you can and herbs and spices are good except for garlic and onion so but it's just like you have to test it out. So if you want more support, I know my client um, is so relieved that she's got someone to kind of help her and guide her with that. I'll have a link in the, um, in the write-up for you. Reach out to me. I, I really want you to uh, fill in a question questionnaire, and then we'll get on the phone and we'll discuss you know, how, how I can help you so that you can get the most out of your nutrition so that you can look great, feel great. And, uh, that's what it's all about. So consider reducing FODMAP foods. The list is there, especially if you're feeling gassy or bloaty, and I think it will really help. All right. Have an awesome day.